Have you ever seen a hummingbird? I have been blessed to see a hummingbird out in nature, as well as in photographs and on TV. And they move so fast. I think the first hummingbirds I ever saw were ruby-throated with the iridescent green bodies and their wings move so fast it's impossible to see unless you look in photographs and you see the beautiful time-lapsed photos and they're constantly moving. I remember first falling in love with hummingbirds when we went on a hike when I was younger up at Mule Peak and at the top of the ranger station there seemed to be hummingbird feeders all around and I felt like we were surrounded by what felt like thousands of hummingbirds and I know this is a memory from my childhood and I'm sure there weren't thousands but that's what it felt like thousands thousands of them at the feeders and always moving, 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 moving. None standing still. When my sister and I were older, Beth, my sister, said, my mom is a hummingbird. Do you know the song Flight of the Bumblebee? And I know it's not Flight of the Hummingbird, but that is what I would always hear when my mom would go into hummingbird mode. And things must get done. My mother is a planner. She is an organizer. And at five foot and three quarters, but at DMV, you have to give a solid number. So she would round up. Trust me, if you are a certain height, which is short, you round up. She had to get things done. She always had a list. List. Lists. Oh, she loves lists. And whether they are pen and paper or in her head, she is miraculous at ticking things off at lightning speed, like a hummingbird. And if things have to get cleaned, oh, watch out, hummingbird mode. So if you had something you loved from your childhood and you did not clean your room in time, it might not be there later. So yes, our mom is the hummingbird. And what I would love to say is that she is a morning person, morning person. And sadly, oh, our daughters are a turtle and a sloth, if we're going to go with spirit animals. So here is the morning routine, because that is what I'm going to share with you. Mothers are spectacular beings. Parents are spectacular beings. And when you have a hummingbird mother who is always busy getting everything ready, one of those things that she has to get ready are the kids. And when you have one kid, Beth, who's a turtle and tucks her head inside the shell, it's kind of hard to knock on that shell and get her going. And when you have the other one, who is a sloth, and means well, but doesn't really move great in the morning. It's especially difficult. Well, part of your job is to train those kids to move. And she had a list. So a typical day when we were kids would be this. Mom, the hummingbird, would be up first. First, she would open the door to Turtle's room. Beth. <clears throat> Bethy, it's time to get up. You hear some sort of noise, and then she'd shut the door quickly. That was sort of like the alarm. And that was the snooze. Then she'd come into my room. Now, I'm younger than my sister by about four and a half years. And I would be greeted Broadway style. Door kicked open. And she would begin to sing, rise and shine and give God the glory, glory. And I'm laying in bed in corpse prone position in yoga. 
And Lord, God, I wanted to rise and shine and give you glory, glory. But it was really, really hard when I had to go to school. And she would come and she'd press on the bed. And now later in life, after having a regular bed, I had a water bed, which is a bizarre thing to have when you were growing up in earthquake state of California. But we had water beds. It's the 70s and 80s. Ah, what can I say? And I'm hearing, feeling this, and I'm hearing, rise and shine, give God the glory, glory. And it's like, all right, God, I'm getting up, getting up, because if I don't, I might throw up. And so mom is zipping around the room, because of course I didn't get anything ready the day before. I don't need to. I have mom. And she'd zip over to the dresser and she'd start pulling out things, because you know what? Sloth don't care what sloth wears. And mom was blessed that way that her kids really didn't care what we wore. I had hand-me-downs usually from my sister, jeans, shirt, whatever works. And I knew it was time for me to get involved when I would sit on the edge of the bed and I'd hear mom in the bottom drawer of the dresser digging through the socks going, where's the sockies? Where's the sockies? Because we were all responsible for our own laundry and I was too lazy sloth to put the socks together so mom's trying to match up socks and she's trying to energize me she is putting the enthusiasm of the morning together and I am not feeling it but I'm trying and it's at this point that inevitably even when I became a teenager I start laughing because watching your mom scrambling around in your sock drawer going where's the sockies it's hard it's hard not to laugh because she has such a good heart and she's like that hummingbird just beautiful with her blue eyes twinkling her arms moving she's already moved more in that 10 minutes and I'm going to move the next three hours so I laugh and I'm like all right all right all right I'm gonna go look for the socks I'm gonna look for the socks she goes, okay, when you're, ven- when you're ready, you need to go and wake up Beth. Wake up Beth. Ugh. Ugh. Now, she didn't make me do this when I was younger because she feared for my life. But once I got a certain age, I was the second alarm. Now, after having a few things thrown at me, I quickly had learned to develop my reflexes. You know, sometimes it'd be a pillow because she was in an okay mood, but sometimes it'd be something hard, whatever she could reach. Because see, her excuse in the morning was she was getting her hair to flatten. Now, I'm going to tell y'all, yes, straightening irons were invented at this time. Straightening the hair was the excuse Turtle needed to stay in the shower. Now, during this time of us getting ready, mom is in the kitchen. Okay, now when we got older, you know, we had to get our own breakfast together. But when we were younger, mom would get stuff together. But throughout my entire childhood, including being a teenager, mom, she made us lunch. Now, I want to say how extraordinary that is because we were always responsible for chores. My sister and I always had a list. We had to divide up. We cleaned the whole house. My mom took care of her and dad's room. My sister and I took care of everything else, including our rooms. Beth kind of did her room. Uh, My mom took care of all the outdoor stuff. My dad, mm, yeah, 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 okay, my dad didn't do anything. But, you know, everybody else did stuff. So for my mom to take care of the lunch, you have to understand why. Every day, my mother put in our lunches a note. She wrote a little note, put a little sticker, put in our bags. I used to get, because I, I used to laugh at Telly Salalas when he come on and goes, remember who loves you, baby. You young people won't know who that is, but you older people will. And sometimes my mom would just have that. Remember who loves you, baby, mommy. Sometimes if it was a day I was worried about a test, honey, I know you're going to do great. Love you. Sometimes... If I just, I I had to stay after, maybe I was doing a competition. She's like, I'm going to be there. I'm going to see you later. I love you. And then it got to the point where our friends, who were like family that came over, they started getting notes in my lunch. Michelle, 
I heard you did great on that project. Pilar, I love you. You're going to be fine. Kelly, Kelly, I love you. You're going to be great on your math test today. Carmen, Carmen, I know you can do this. Go out for cheer. Now, can I just tell you, do you know how hard it is to complain about your mother to your friends when she does things like this? You can't. You just can't. The only person you can complain about your mother to is your other sibling. That's it. And when half the time you don't talk to your sibling because, you know, you guys are all fighting, you have no one to complain to. Not that we had tons to complain about when it came to our mom, except that she was so darn chipper in the morning. But those notes, you know, they got you through the day. They got you through the day. They got me through seventh grade. Heck, seventh grade was the worst year ever of my education career in public schools. Yeah, mom was still there. And I knew that at the end of the day, she was going to be there then too. But she established that morning routine. And I'm happy to say that as I am close to approaching 45, I may still be like a sloth, but I do know how to get up, even if it's still kind of like, oh, God, I'm giving you glory, glory, but really, it's early. It's early. And my sister's still a turtle. My mother's that hummingbird. Now she has taught preschool for over 40 years, and she is always bright and cheerful, and those children love her. And there's a reason. Because she knows how to give completely of herself in that moment. Maybe it's because she is a hummingbird. Right? Maybe that's what it is. Now, when I turned 40, which was five years ago, I made a list of all the things I wanted to do. First thing on that list was a road trip. Now, I got this list. I'm going to be honest. I just like stole this idea of a bucket list uh, from a friend of mine. But they were 40 reasonable things. And my spring break fell over my birthday. And I wanted to do a road trip with my two best friends, my mom, my sister. My mom's like, why road trip? And I said, you know, I remember all those trips we used to take up north to see grandma and grandpa. And I just, you know, it's been so long since it's just been three of us together in a car. I mean, it's not always a good time. But, you know, I live out of state now. I just, I just want to spend time with my girls. So we did. And one of the other things mom wanted to know, because, you know, I made a list. I made a list, a bucket list. So mom was thrilled. What else is on the list? What else can I do that's on the list with you? So one of them was, I want to watch a sunrise and a sunset on the same day. Now remember, this is Miss Morning Routine. Sunset, that is her gig. Turtle, Turtle said, you know, I'm going to catch you on the flip side. We're going to do the sunset. So we left her in the hotel room. And so five years ago, we were in Morrow Bay. My mom and I got up before dawn. And we went down. And there's a little place open, pastries and coffee. I need coffee. Sloth has learned that. And we sat at a picnic table. It was dark, you know dark right before the light hits about an hour before and there's a couple people out it was real quiet and want someone walking their dog and some people going to work and we sat and we talked we talked about some of this right getting up in the morning oh yeah best still can't get up in the morning we were laughing because we knew she wasn't going to join us for the sunrise but we talked about things that are just between us and what it means for her to be my mother and for me to be her daughter, and Beth to be her daughter. And then mom said, you know, sun's going to rise. And we stood up, and we held hands, and we looked up. There's some hills over to the east. And we watched as the first ray broke over the hills, and it just flooded, it just flooded the sky. And I'm holding my mother's hand, and I'm witnessing the end of one day and the beginning of this new one. This new one in which I'm going to get a spend with my mother and my sister. And I know I'm going to watch the sunset with them too. 
And I thought, is there anybody else who knows what a morning means better than my mother? Or anyone who has loved me quite as long? No. And I could actually stand there because I had coffee and I could give God the glory glory. And I didn't have to look for sakis because I already had them on. And after the sun broke, it wasn't like it was a musical. <laughs> People suddenly flooded the, the quiet downtown streets of Morro Bay. It was still quiet. And we walked over to look out over the ocean and oh, there were birds diving to get fish. And there were sea otters, yeah, they were playing, playing in the water. One was a mama holding her little baby. And it was just beautiful as the light touched the water. And we were standing next to the restaurant we were going to eat in that night where we were going to watch the sunset. And I couldn't think of a better way to thank and to be with my mother than that day. Now, have you ever seen a hummingbird stand still? You know, for all that I've seen hummingbirds out in nature, I have never seen personally a hummingbird stand still. And in all the nature shows that I've seen, all the photographs I've seen, their wings are still always in motion. And I think about that in connection to my mom as much as my sister and I joke and we give her this, oh, mom's in hummingbird mode, means she's not going to stop. Clear her out. I think of how beautiful they are, but I also think of how they're constantly in motion. That's our mom, but it's also what our mom feels for us, that love, that constant concern, that no matter how old we get, that I'm going to be 45 this year and my sister's going to be 50, that that love of hers beats just as fast as those wings, that her concern for us that her wanting us to have the very best never, ever stops. It is a constant, no matter how early the morning is or how late. May you all have a hummingbird in your life. I am thankful for ours.